Once upon a time, in a small village in the countryside, there lived an old woman named Mrs. Wilson. She was known throughout the village for her hospitality and her willingness to open her home to anyone who needed a place to stay. One day, a young man named John arrived in the village. He had been traveling for days and was in need of a place to rest. Mrs. Wilson welcomed him into her home and offered him a comfortable bed for the night. John was a charming guest and spent the evening telling Mrs. Wilson stories of his travels. She was delighted to have such an interesting guest and offered to let him stay for another night. The next day, John spent the day exploring the village and meeting the locals. Mrs. Wilson was happy to see him enjoying himself and invited him to join her for dinner that evening. However, on the third day, John's behavior began to change. He became demanding and entitled, expecting Mrs. Wilson to cater to his every need. He complained about the food, the bed, and the lack of entertainment in the village. Mrs. Wilson tried her best to accommodate John's requests, but his demands only grew more unreasonable as the day went on. By the end of the night, she was exhausted and regretted her decision to let him stay. The next morning, Mrs. Wilson politely told John that it was time for him to leave. He became angry and refused to go, claiming that she had promised him a place to stay for as long as he needed. Mrs. Wilson stood her ground and insisted that John leave immediately. Eventually, he begrudgingly packed his bags and left, leaving behind a trail of mess and chaos in his wake. From that day on, Mrs. Wilson learned the importance of setting boundaries and not allowing guests to overstay their welcome. She realized that while hospitality was important, it was also important to protect her own well-being and sanity. The village gossip soon spread the phrase, a guest is a guest for two days. On the third he is a pest, and it became a warning to others to be wary of letting guests overstay their welcome. Another story that illustrates the saying, a guest is a guest for two days, on the third he is a pest, is that of a wealthy businessman named Mr. Thompson. He was known for his lavish lifestyle and frequent travels around the world. One day, Mr. Thompson arrived in a small town and decided to stay at a local bed and breakfast. The owner, Mrs. Green, was delighted to have such a distinguished guest and went out of her way to make him feel comfortable. For the first two days, Mr. Thompson was a model guest. He was polite, charming, and even helped Mrs. Green with some of the chores around the house. She was so pleased with his behavior that she offered to let him stay for an additional night. However, on the third day, Mr. Thompson's true nature began to show. He became demanding and arrogant, insisting that Mrs. Green cater to his every need. He complained about the food, the cleanliness of the room, and even the way she dressed. Mrs. Green was taken aback by Mr. Thompson's behavior and tried her best to accommodate him, but his demands only grew more unreasonable as the day went on. By the end of the night, she was exhausted and frustrated. The next morning, Mrs. Green politely told Mr. Thompson that it was time for him to leave. He became angry and refused to go claiming that he had paid for a room and had the right to stay as long as he wanted. Mrs. Green stood her ground and insisted that Mr. Thompson leave immediately. He eventually packed his bags and left, but not before causing a scene and damaging some of the furniture in the room. After Mr. Thompson's departure, Mrs. Green realized that not all guests were created equal. She learned that it was important to trust her instincts and set clear boundaries with her guests. From that day on, she made sure to enforce a strict two-day limit for all guests and never allowed anyone to overstay their welcome again. Her business thrive. D. And the saying, a guest is a guest for two days. On the third he is a pest, became a mantra for her and her staff. In a small village nestled in the mountains, there lived a kind-hearted woman named Anna. Anna loved to welcome travelers into her home and provide them with a warm meal and a comfortable place to rest. One day, a man named Jack arrived in the village. He was tired, hungry, and in need of shelter. Anna saw him wandering aimlessly and invited him to stay at her home. For the first two days, Jack was a gracious guest. He helped with chores around the house and shared stories of his travels. Anna was pleased to have such a wonderful guest and even offered to let him stay for a third night. 
However, on the third day, Jack's behavior changed. He began to demand more food, complain about the accommodations, and became increasingly critical of Anna's hospitality. Despite her best efforts to please him, Jack's demands only grew more outrageous. By the end of the night, Anna was exhausted and regretted her decision to allow him to stay for an extra night. The next morning, Anna told Jack that he had to leave. He became angry and refused to go, claiming that he had paid for a place to stay and had the right to remain as long as he wished. Anna stood firm and insisted that he leave immediately. Jack eventually packed his bags and left, but not before causing a scene and damaging some of her property. After Jack's departure, Anna realized that not all guests were grateful for her hospitality. She learned the importance of setting boundaries and not allowing guests to overstay their welcome. From then on, Anna made sure to limit her guests' stays to no more than two nights. She continued to welcome travelers into her home, but always kept in mind the saying, a guest is a guest for two days, on the third he is a pest. In a bustling city, there lived a young couple named John and Sarah. They loved to host parties and entertain their friends in their spacious apartment. One day, they invited a friend of a friend named Mike to stay with them for a few days. Mike seemed pleasant enough, and they were happy to welcome him into their home. For the first two days, Mike was a charming guest. He helped with the cooking, told funny stories, and even bought some groceries to share with the hosts. On the third day, however, Mike's behavior began to change. He started to drink heavily and become loud and obnoxious. He would invite strangers over and play loud music, disturbing the neighbors. John and Sarah tried to be patient with him, hoping that he would calm down but Mike's behavior only grew more unruly and disruptive. By the end of the third day, John and Sarah had had enough. They politely told Mike that it was time for him to leave, as they could not tolerate his behavior any longer. Mike became angry and refused to leave. He claimed that he had nowhere else to go and that he was entitled to stay as long as he wanted. John and Sarah stood the ground and insisted that he leave immediately. Mike eventually packed his bags and left, but not before causing a scene and damaging some of their property. After Mike's departure, John and Sarah realized that not all guests were considerate of their host's feelings. They learned that it was important to set boundaries and not allow guests to overstay their welcome. From then on, they made sure to limit the guests' stays to no more than two days. They continued to entertain their friends, but always kept in mind the saying, a guest is a guest for two days on the third he is a pest. In a small town, there lived an elderly couple named Mr. and Mrs. Thompson. They were known for their hospitality and kindness, and their home was always open to visitors. One day, a young man named Mark came to their town. He was a distant relative of the Thompsons and was in need of a place to stay. The couple happily welcomed him into their home and provided him with a warm meal and a comfortable bed to sleep in. For the first two days, Mark was a pleasant guest. He helped with the household chores and spent time chatting with the couple. Mr. and Mrs. Thompson were delighted to have such a wonderful guest in their home. However, on the third day, Mark's behavior changed. He became increasingly rude and demanding, insisting that he be given special treatment and that the couple cater to his every need. Mr. and Mrs. Thompson were taken aback by Mark's behavior and tried to reason with him but he became more and more difficult to deal with, causing tension in the household. On the fourth day, the couple decided that they could no longer tolerate Mark's behavior. They kindly told him that it was time for him to leave and find another place to stay. Mark became angry and refused to leave. He argued that he had nowhere else to go and that he had a right to stay in their home for as long as he wished. Mr. and Mrs. Thompson stood their ground and insisted that he leave immediately. They explained that they could not allow him to continue to behave in such a disrespectful manner in their home. Mark eventually packed his bags and left, but not before causing a scene and damaging some of the couple's belongings. After Mark's departure, Mr. and Mrs. Thompson realized that not all guests were grateful for their hospitality. They learned that it was important to set boundaries and not allow guests to overstay their welcome. From then on, 
they made sure to limit the guest stays to no more than two days. They continued to welcome visitors into their home, but always kept in mind the saying, a guest is a guest for two days. On the third he is a pest. In a beautiful countryside, there was a grand mansion owned by a wealthy family named the Johnsons. They were known for their lavish parties and extravagant lifestyle. One day, they decided to host a weekend-long celebration and invited all of their wealthy friends and acquaintances. One of their guests was a man named Peter, who was a distant relative of the Johnsons. Peter arrived on Friday and was immediately impressed with the grandeur of the mansion. He spent the first two days enjoying the lavish parties and socializing with the other guests. He was the life of the party and everyone enjoyed his company. However, on the third day, Peter's behavior changed. He started to demand special treatment and became increasingly arrogant and rude. He complained about the food, the wine, and the accommodations, and insisted that he be given special privileges. The Johnsons were taken aback by Peter's behavior and tried to reason with him. But he became more and more difficult to deal with, causing tension among the other guests. By the end of the third day, the Johnsons had had enough. They politely told Peter that it was time for him to leave and find another place to stay. Peter became angry and refused to leave. He claimed that he had a right to stay in the mansion as long as he wanted, and that the Johnsons were obligated to provide for him. The Johnsons stood their ground and insisted that he leave immediately. They explained that they could not allow him to continue to behave in such a disrespectful manner in their home. Peter eventually packed his bags and left, but not before causing a scene and damaging some of the Johnsons' property. After Peter's departure, the Johnsons realized that not all guests were grateful for their hospitality. They learned that it was important to set boundaries and not allow guests to overstay their welcome. From then on, they made sure to limit the guests' stays to no more than two days. They continued to host lavish parties and social gatherings, but always kept in mind the saying, a guest is a guest for two days, on the third he is a pest. In a small village, there lived a kind-hearted man named John. He was known for his generosity and hospitality, and his home was always open to visitors. One day, a strand. Gur came to his village and asked for a place to stay. John welcomed him into his home and provided him with food and a warm bed to sleep in. For the first two days, the stranger was a pleasant guest. He helped with the household chores and spent time chatting with John. John was delighted to have such a wonderful guest in his home. However, on the third day, the stranger's behavior changed. He became increasingly demanding, insisting that John provide him with more food and better accommodations. He also started to criticize John's way of life and started to behave in a rude and disrespectful manner. John tried to reason with the stranger and explain that he was doing the best he could to provide for him but the stranger would not listen and continued to make unreasonable demands. On the fourth day, John realized that he could no longer tolerate the stranger's behavior. He kindly told him that it was time for him to leave and find another place to stay. The stranger became angry and refused to leave. He argued that he had nowhere else to go and that he had a right to stay in John's home for as long as he wished. John stood his ground and insisted that he leave immediately. He explained that he could not allow the stranger to continue to behave in such a disrespectful manner in his home. The stranger eventually packed his bags and left, but not before causing a scene and damaging some of John's belongings. After the stranger's departure, John realized that not all guests were grateful for his hospitality. He learned that it was important to set boundaries and not allow guests to overstay their welcome. From then on, he made sure to limit his guest stays to no more than two days. He continued to welcome visitors into his home, but always kept in mind the saying, a guest is a guest for two days, on the third he is a pest. He also became more selective about who he allowed into his home, making sure to choose guests who were respectful and appreciative of his generosity. In a bustling city, there was a luxurious hotel owned by a wealthy businessman named Mr. Smith. He prided himself on providing the best possible service to his guests and ensuring that they had a memorable stay at his hotel. One day, 
a wealthy businessman named Mr. Brown checked into the hotel. He was known for his demanding and entitled behavior and expected only the best accommodations and service. For the first two days, Mr. Brown was pleased with his stay at the hotel. He enjoyed the luxurious amenities and the attentive service provided by the hotel staff. However, on the third day, Mr. Brown's behavior changed. He started to complain about minor issues and became increasingly demanding and rude to the hotel staff. He demanded special treatment and insisted that his every whim be catered to. The hotel staff tried their best to accommodate Mr. Brown's requests, but he continued to behave in a disrespectful manner. He even went as far as to threaten the hotel staff with negative reviews online if they did not meet his demands. Mr. Smith, who had been monitoring Mr. Brown's behavior, realized that he could not tolerate his behavior any longer. He knew that Mr. Brown had overstayed his welcome and was becoming a pest to his hotel and staff. On the fourth day, Mr. Smith politely informed Mr. Brown that it was time for him to check out and find another place to stay. He explained that his behavior was unacceptable and that he could not continue to stay at the hotel. Mr. Brown became angry and threatened to take legal action against the hotel. He claimed that he had a right to stay at the hotel for as long as he wanted and that he had been treated unfairly. Mr. Smith stood his ground and refused to back down. He explained that he had the right to refuse service to anyone who behaved in a disrespectful and entitled manner. Mr. Brown eventually left the hotel, but not before causing a scene and damaging some of the hotel's property. After Mr. Bro. W.N.'s departure, Mr. Smith realized that not all guests were grateful for his hospitality. He learned that it was important to set boundaries and not allow guests to overstay their welcome. From then on, he made sure to limit his guests' stays to no more than two days. He also became more selective about who he allowed to stay at his hotel, making sure to choose guests who were respectful and appreciative of his service. In the end, Mr. Smith's decision to enforce his boundaries paid off. His hotel became known as a place of luxury and excellence, where only the most respectful and appreciative guests were welcome. In a small town, there was a humble family named the Williams. They were known for their hospitality and kindness to strangers. One day, a man named Jack came to their town and asked for a place to stay. The Williams family welcomed him into their home and provided him with food and a warm bed to sleep in. For the first two days, Jack was a pleasant guest. He helped with the household chores and spent time chatting with the Williams family. They enjoyed his company and were delighted to have such a wonderful guest in their home. However, on the third day, Jack's behavior changed. He became increasingly demanding and critical, insisting that the Williams family provide him with more food and better accommodations. He also started to criticize their way of life and started to behave in a rude and disrespectful manner. The Williams family tried to reason with Jack and explain that they were doing the best they could to provide for him. But Jack would not listen and continued to make unreasonable demands. On the fourth day, the Williams family realized that they could no longer tolerate Jack's behavior. They kindly told him that it was time for him to leave and find another place to stay. Jack became angry and refused to leave. He argued that he had nowhere else to go and that he had a right to stay in their home for as long as he wished. The Williams family stood their ground and insisted that he leave immediately. They explained that they could not allow Jack to continue to behave in such a disrespectful manner in their home. After some time, Jack finally agreed to leave, but not before causing a scene and damaging some of the Williams family's belongings. After Jack's departure, the Williams family realized that not all guests were grateful for their hospitality. They learned that it was important to set boundaries and not allow guests to overstay their welcome. From then on, they made sure to limit the guests' stays to no more than two days. They also became more selective about who they allowed into their home, making sure to choose guests who were respectful and appreciative of their kindness. In the end, the Williams family's decision to enforce their boundaries paid off. They continued to welcome visitors into their home, but always kept in mind the saying, a guest is a guest for two days, on the third he is a pest. 
They also continued to be known for their hospitality and kindness, but were more cautious about who they allowed into their home. In a remote mountain village, there was an innkeeper named Sarah. She had a cozy inn that was a popular stopover for travelers who were passing through the village. One day, a man named James checked into the inn. He was friendly and polite, and Sarah was delighted to have such a wonderful guest staying at her inn. For the first two days, James was a model guest. He helped out around the inn, chatted with the other guests, and even helped Sarah with some of the cooking. However, on the third day, James started to behave differently. He became demanding and critical, complaining about the food and the accommodations. He also started to make unreasonable requests, expecting Sarah to cater to his every whim. Sarah tried to reason with James and explain that she was doing the best she could to provide for him. But James would not listen and continued to make unreasonable demands. On the fourth day, Sarah realized that she could no longer tolerate James's behavior. She kindly told him that it was time for him to leave and find another place to stay. James became angry and refused to leave. He argued that he had a right to stay in the inn for as long as he wanted and that he had paid good money for his stay. Sarah stood her ground and insisted that he leave immediately. She explained that she could not allow James to continue to behave in such a disrespectful manner in her inn. After some time, James finally agreed to leave, but not before causing a scene and da. Magging some of the inn's property. After James's departure, Sarah realized that not all guests were grateful for her hospitality. She learned that it was important to set boundaries and not allow guests to overstay their welcome. From then on, she made sure to limit her guest stays to no more than two days. She also became more selective about who she allowed to stay at her inn, making sure to choose guests who were respectful and appreciative of her service. In the end, Sarah's decision to enforce her boundaries paid off. Her inn became known as a place of comfort and relaxation, where only the most respectful and appreciative guests were welcome. And Sarah continued to provide excellent service to her guests, knowing that a guest is a guest for two days, on the third he is a pest. In a bustling city, there was a luxurious hotel known for its opulence and world-class service. One day, a wealthy businessman named David checked into the hotel for a week-long stay. For the first two days, David was a polite and gracious guest. He enjoyed the hotel's amenities and even tipped the staff generously. However, on the third day, David's behavior started to change. He became increasingly demanding, insisting that the hotel staff cater to his every need. He complained about everything from the quality of the food to the temperature of his room. Despite the staff's best efforts to accommodate him, David continued to be difficult and demanding. He even went so far as to threaten to write a bad review of the hotel if his demands were not met. The hotel's management realized that they could not allow David to continue to behave in such a disrespectful manner. They kindly informed him that his stay at the hotel would be cut short, and that he would need to find another place to stay. David became angry and refused to leave. He argued that he had paid a lot of money for his stay and that he had a right to stay at the hotel for as long as he wanted. The hotel's management remained firm and insisted that David leave immediately. They explained that they could not allow him to continue to cause a disturbance in the hotel. After some time, David finally agreed to leave, but not before causing a scene and damaging some of the hotel's property. After David's departure, the hotel's management realized that not all guests were grateful for their hospitality. They learned that it was important to set boundaries and not allow guests to overstay their welcome. From then on, they made sure to limit the guest stays to no more than two days. They also became more selective about who they allowed to stay at the hotel, making sure to choose guests who were respectful and appreciative of their service. In the end, the hotel continued to provide excellent service to its guests, but was more cautious about who they allowed to stay at the hotel. They also kept in mind the saying, a guest is a guest for two days. On the third he is a pest, and made sure to enforce their boundaries to ensure a peaceful and enjoyable stay for all guests. In a small coastal town, there was a bed and breakfast run by a woman named Emily. 
She was known for her warm hospitality and delicious homemade breakfasts. One day, a couple named John and Jane checked into the bed and breakfast for a weekend getaway. They were polite and friendly, and Emily was delighted to have such lovely guests staying at her establishment. For the first two days, John and Jane were model guests. They went out during the day to explore the town, and returned to the bed and breakfast in the evening to enjoy Emily's delicious meals and cozy accommodations. However, on the third day, John and Jane started to behave differently. They began to make unreasonable requests, such as asking for breakfast to be served earlier than usual and asking for free extras that were not included in their reservation. Emily tried her best to accommodate their requests, but found that John and Jane were becoming more demanding and unappreciative. She realized that they were taking advantage of her hospitality. On the fourth day, Emily decided to kindly inform John and Jane that it was time for them to check out and find another place to stay. She explained that she could no longer tolerate their disrespectful behavior and unreasonable demands. John and Jane were surprised and upset by Emily's decision, as they had been enjoying their stay at the bed and breakfast. However, they soon realized that they had overstepped their boundaries and had been behaving in an ungrateful manner. They apologized to Emily and thanked her for her hospitality, but understood that their behavior had made their stay uncomfortable for everyone involved. After John and Jane's departure, Emily reflected on the experience and realized that it was important to set boundaries and not allow guests to overstay their welcome. She also decided to be more selective about who she allowed to stay at her bed and breakfast, making sure to choose guests who were respectful and appreciative of her service. In the end, Emily's decision to enforce her boundaries paid off. Her bed and breakfast became known as a place of comfort and relaxation, where only the most respectful and appreciative guests were welcome. And Emily continued to provide excellent service to her guests, knowing that a guest is a guest for two days, on the third he is a pest. In a remote mountain village, there was a small inn run by a kind and generous woman named Maria. The inn was known for its cozy rooms and delicious home-cooked meals. One day, a group of four friends arrived at the inn, hoping to stay for a week-long hiking trip in the mountains. Maria welcomed them warmly and showed them to their rooms, where they settled in and enjoyed a comfortable night's sleep. The first two days of the group's stay went smoothly, with Maria serving them delicious meals and providing them with hiking recommendations. However, on the third day, the group's behavior started to change. They began to make unreasonable requests, such as asking for free extras and special treatment. They also became loud and disruptive, making it difficult for other guests to enjoy their stay at the inn. Maria tried her best to accommodate the group's requests, but found that they were becoming more demanding and unappreciative. She realized that they were taking advantage of her hospitality. On the fourth day, Maria decided to speak to the group about their behavior. She kindly informed them that she could no longer tolerate their disrespectful behavior and unreasonable demands, and that they would need to leave the inn. The group was surprised and upset by Maria's decision, as they had been enjoying their stay at the inn. However, they soon realized that they had overstepped their boundaries and had been behaving in an ungrateful manner. They apologized to Maria and thanked her for her hospitality, but understood that their behavior had made their stay uncomfortable for everyone involved. After the group's departure, Maria reflected on the experience and realized that it was important to set boundaries and not allow guests to overstay their welcome. She also decided to be more selective about who she allowed to stay at her inn making sure to choose guests who were respectful and appreciative of her service. In the end, Maria's decision to enforce her boundaries paid off. Her inn became known as a place of comfort and relaxation, where only the most respectful and appreciative guests were welcome. And Maria continued to provide excellent service to her guests, knowing that a guest is a guest for two days, on the third he is a pest. In a bustling city, there was a luxurious hotel run by a team of professional staff. The hotel was known for its grand architecture and excellent service. One day, a wealthy businessman named Mr. Johnson checked into the hotel for a week-long business trip. He was polite and free. NDLY, 
and the staff were delighted to have such an esteemed guest staying at their establishment. For the first two days, Mr. Johnson was a model guest. He spent his days attending meetings and conferences, and returned to the hotel in the evenings to enjoy the luxurious amenities and attentive service. However, on the third day, Mr. Johnson started to behave differently. He began to make unreasonable demands, such as asking for free upgrades and special treatment. He also became impatient and rude to the hotel staff, making it difficult for them to provide the level of service that they were known for. The hotel staff tried their best to accommodate Mr. Johnson's requests, but found that he was becoming more demanding and unappreciative. They realized that he was taking advantage of their hospitality. On the fourth day, the hotel manager decided to speak to Mr. Johnson about his behavior. He kindly informed him that the hotel could no longer tolerate his disrespectful behavior and unreasonable demands, and that he would need to leave the hotel. Mr. Johnson was surprised and upset by the hotel's decision, as he had been enjoying his stay and the luxurious amenities that the hotel provided. However, he soon realized that he had overstepped his boundaries and had been behaving in an ungrateful manner. He apologized to the hotel staff and thanked them for their service, but understood that his behavior had made his stay uncomfortable for everyone involved. After Mr. Johnson's departure, the hotel staff reflected on the experience and realized that it was important to set boundaries and not allow guests to overstay their welcome. They also decided to be more selective about who they allowed to stay at their hotel, making sure to choose guests who were respectful and appreciative of their service. In the end, the hotel's decision to enforce their boundaries paid off. Their hotel became known as a place of luxury and excellent service, where only the most respectful and appreciative guests were welcome. And the hotel staff continued to provide exceptional service to their guests, knowing that a guest is a guest for two days, on the third he is a pest. In a small town, there was a bed and breakfast run by a friendly couple named John and Sarah. Their bed and breakfast was known for its cozy rooms and delicious homemade breakfasts. One day, a couple named Tom and Linda checked into the bed and breakfast for a three-night stay. They were polite and friendly, and John and Sarah were excited to have such lovely guests staying at their establishment. For the first two days, Tom and Linda were great guests. They spent their days exploring the town and the surrounding areas, and returned to the bed and breakfast in the evenings to enjoy the cozy atmosphere and delicious breakfasts. However, on the third day, Tom and Linda's behavior started to change. They became loud and disruptive, playing loud music and talking loudly late into the night. They also made unreasonable demands, such as asking for special treatment and extra amenities. John and Sarah tried their best to accommodate Tom and Linda's requests, but found that they were becoming more demanding and unappreciative. They realized that they were taking advantage of their hospitality. On the fourth day, John and Sarah decided to speak to Tom and Linda about their behavior. They kindly informed them that they could no longer tolerate their disrespectful behavior and unreasonable demands, and that they would need to leave the bed and breakfast. Tom and Linda were surprised and upset by John and Sarah's decision, as they had been enjoying their stay and the cozy atmosphere of the bed and breakfast. However, they soon realized that they had overstepped their boundaries and had been behaving in an ungrateful manner. They apologized to John and Sarah and thanked them for their hospitality, but understood that their behavior had made their stay uncomfortable for everyone involved. After Tom and Linda's departure, John and Sarah reflected on the experience and realized that it was important to set boundaries and not allow guests to overstay their welcome. They also decided to be more selective about who they allowed to stay at their bed and breakfast, making sure to choose guests who were respectful and appreciative of their service. In the end, John and Sarah's decision to enforce their boundaries paid off. Their bed and breakfast became known as a place of comfort and relaxation, where only the most respectful and appreciative guests were welcome. And John and Sarah continued to provide excellent service to their guests, knowing that a guest is a guest for two days, on the third he is a pest. In a remote village, there was a small hostel run by a kind family. The hostel was known for its affordable rates and homely atmosphere.
One day, a traveler named Jack checked into the hostel for a three-night stay. He was polite and friendly, and the family was happy to have such a kind guest staying at their establishment. For the first two days, Jack was a great guest. He spent his days exploring the village and the nearby countryside, and returned to the hostel in the evenings to enjoy the warm atmosphere and home-cooked meals. However, on the third day, Jack's behavior started to change. He became grumpy and unappreciative, complaining about the food and the amenities that were provided. He also started to make unreasonable demands, such as asking for free upgrades and special treatment. The family tried their best to accommodate Jack's requests, but found that he was becoming more demanding and ungrateful. They realized that he was taking advantage of their hospitality. On the fourth day, the family decided to speak to Jack about his behavior. They kindly informed him that they could no longer tolerate his disrespectful behavior and unreasonable demands, and that he would need to leave the hostel. Jack was surprised and upset by the family's decision as he had been enjoying his stay and the affordable rates that the hostel provided. However, he soon realized that he had overstepped his boundaries and had been behaving in an ungrateful manner. He apologized to the family and thanked them for their service, but understood that his behavior had made his stay uncomfortable for everyone involved. After Jack's departure, the family reflected on the experience and realized that it was important to set boundaries and not allow guests to overstay their welcome. They also decided to be more selective about who they allowed to stay at their hostel, making sure to choose guests who were respectful and appreciative of their service. In the end, the family's decision to enforce their boundaries paid off. Their hostel became known as a place of warmth and hospitality, where only the most respectful and appreciative guests were welcome. And the family continued to provide excellent service to their guests, knowing that a guest is a guest for two days on the third he is a pest. In a luxurious hotel located in a bustling city, a businessman named David checked in for a three-day stay. He was well-dressed and professional, and the hotel staff was impressed by his demeanor. For the first two days, David was a model guest. He spent his days attending business meetings and conferences, and returned to the hotel in the evenings to relax and unwind. He was polite to the staff and even left a generous tip for the housekeeping staff. However, on the third day, David's behavior started to change. He became demanding and entitled, expecting the staff to cater to his every whim. He started to complain about the room, insisting that it wasn't up to his standards. He also made unreasonable requests, such as asking for a private butler to attend to his needs. The hotel staff tried their best to accommodate David's requests, but found that he was becoming more difficult and ungrateful. They realized that he was taking advantage of their hospitality. On the fourth day, the hotel manager decided to speak to David about his behavior. She kindly informed him that they could no longer tolerate his disrespectful behavior and unreasonable demands, and that he would need to leave the hotel. David was surprised and upset by the hotel's decision as he had been enjoying his stay and the luxurious amenities that the hotel provided. However, he soon realized that he had overstepped his boundaries and had been behaving in an entitled manner. He apologized to the hotel staff and thanked them for their service, but understood that his behavior had made his stay uncomfortable for everyone involved. After David's departure, the hotel staff reflected on the experience and realized that it was important to set boundaries and not allow guests to overstay their welcome. They also decided to be more selective about who they allowed to stay at the hotel, making sure to choose guests who were respectful and appreciative of their service. In the end, the hotel's decision to enforce their boundaries paid off. Their hotel became known as a place of luxury and excellence, where only the most respectful and appreciative guests were welcome and the staff continued to provide top-notch service to their guests, knowing that a guest is a guest for two days, on the third he is a pest. In a small bed and breakfast located in a charming coastal town, a couple named Tom and Sarah checked in for a three-night stay. They were friendly and enthusiastic, and the bed and breakfast owner was happy to have such a lovely couple staying at her establishment. For the first two days, 
Tom and Sarah were model guests. They spent their days exploring the town and the nearby beaches, and returned to the bed and breakfast in the evenings to enjoy the cozy atmosphere and home cooked meals. However, on the third day, Tom and Sarah's behavior started to change. They became loud and disruptive, playing loud music and making a mess in their room. They also started to demand more attention from the owner, interrupting her conversations with other guests and asking for special treatment. The owner tried her best to accommodate Tom and Sarah's requests, but found that they were becoming more difficult and unappreciative. She realized that they were taking advantage of her hospitality. On the fourth day, the owner decided to speak to Tom and Sarah about their behavior. She kindly informed them that she could no longer tolerate their disrespectful behavior and unreasonable demands, and that they would need to leave the bed and breakfast. Tom and Sarah were surprised and upset by the owner's decision, as they had been enjoying their stay and the charming atmosphere that the bed and breakfast provided. However, they soon realized that they had overstepped their boundaries and had been behaving in a disrespectful manner. They apologized to the owner and thanked her for her service, but understood that their behavior had made their stay uncomfortable for everyone involved. After Tom and Sarah's departure, the bed and breakfast owner reflected on the experience and realized that it was important to set boundaries and not allow guests to overstay their welcome. She also decided to be more selective about who she allowed to stay at her establishment, making sure to choose guests who were respectful and appreciative of her service. In the end, the owner's decision to enforce her boundaries paid off. Her bed and breakfast became known as a place of warmth and hospitality, where only the most respectful and appreciative guests were welcome. And the owner continued to provide excellent service to her guests, knowing that a guest is a guest for two days, on the third he is a pest. In a large resort located on a tropical island, a family of five checked in for a week-long vacation. They were excited to enjoy the sun, sand, and sea, and the resort staff was eager to make their stay memorable. For the first few days, the family was happy and content, spending their days lounging by the pool and participating in resort activities. They were polite to the staff and even left a generous tip for their housekeeping services. However, on the fourth day, the family's behavior started to change. They became demanding and entitled, expecting the staff to cater to their every whim. They started to complain about the food, insisting that it wasn't up to their standards. They also made unreasonable requests, such as asking for private pool access and demanding the staff to bend the rules for them. The resort staff tried their best to accommodate the family's requests, but found that they were becoming more difficult and hunger. Eight fall, they realized that the family was taking advantage of their hospitality. On the seventh day, the resort manager decided to speak to the family about their behavior. He kindly informed them that they could no longer tolerate their disrespectful behavior and unreasonable demands, and that they would need to leave the resort. The family was surprised and upset by the resort's decision, as they had been enjoying their stay and the luxurious amenities that the resort provided. However, they soon realized that they had overstepped their boundaries and had been behaving in an entitled manner. They apologized to the resort staff and thanked them for their service, but understood that their behavior had made their stay uncomfortable for everyone involved. After the family's departure, the resort staff reflected on the experience and realized that it was important to set boundaries and not allow guests to overstay their welcome. They also decided to be more selective about who they allowed to stay at the resort, making sure to choose guests who were respectful and appreciative of their service. In the end, the resort's decision to enforce their boundaries paid off. Their resort became known as a place of luxury and excellence, where only the most respectful and appreciative guests were welcome. And the staff continued to provide top-notch service to their guests, knowing that a guest is a guest for two days, on the third he is a pest. Lena had always enjoyed having guests over at her apartment. She loved to cook for them, share stories, and show them around her city. So when her cousin asked to stay with her for a few days while she was in town, Lena eagerly agreed. At first, everything was going well. Lena's cousin seemed to be enjoying her stay, and they spent their days exploring the city and trying new restaurants. 
but as the days went on, Lena began to feel frustrated with her cousin's behavior. Her cousin was messy and didn't clean up after herself, leaving dirty dishes and clothes lying around the apartment. She also had a tendency to invite her own friends over without asking Lena first, leaving her feeling crowded and overwhelmed. On the third day of her cousin's stay, Lena found herself feeling more and more irritated with her behavior. She tried to be patient and understanding, but couldn't help feeling like her cousin was taking advantage of her hospitality. Finally, on the fourth day, Lena decided to talk to her cousin about her behavior. She explained that while she loved having her stay with her, she needed her to be more considerate of her living space and her feelings. At first, her cousin seemed defensive and hurt, but eventually, she came around and apologized for her behavior. She promised to be more mindful of how she was acting and to make sure that she was being a respectful and grateful guest. For the rest of her stay, Lena's cousin was much more considerate and respectful of her space. They were able to enjoy the rest of their time together, and Lena was glad that she had set boundaries and spoken up about how she was feeling. In the end, Lena realized that while she loved having guests over, it was important to set boundaries and communicate her expectations to ensure that everyone was happy and comfortable. And she knew that a guest is a guest for two days. On the third he is a pest, but that it was up to her to make sure that her guests felt welcomed and appreciated while also respecting her space and her feelings. John had always loved hosting parties at his house. He enjoyed inviting friends and family over to share food, drinks, and good times. So when his friend from college called him up and asked if he could crash at his place for a few days while he was in town for a job interview, John eagerly agreed. At first, everything was going well. John's friend seemed grateful for the hospitality and the chance to catch up with his old friend. But as the days went on, John began to feel frustrated with his friend's behavior. His friend would stay up late watching TV, making noise and disturbing John's sleep. He also didn't contribute to the household chores, leaving John to do all the cleaning and cooking. And on top of that, he would invite his own friends over without asking John first, leaving him feeling crowded and overwhelmed. On the third day of his friend's stay, John found himself feeling more and more irritated with his behavior. He tried to be patient and understanding, but couldn't help feeling like his friend was taking advantage of his hospitality. Finally, on the fourth day, John decided to talk to his friend about his behavior. He explained that while he loved having him stay with him, he needed him to be more considerate of his living space and his feelings. At first, his friend seemed defensive and hurt, but eventually, he came around and apologized for his behavior. He promised to be more mindful of how he was acting and to make sure that he was being a respectful and grateful guest. For the rest of his stay, John's friend was much more considerate and respectful of his space. They were able to enjoy the rest of their time together, and John was glad that he had set boundaries and spoken up about how he was feeling. In the end, John realized that while he loved hosting guests, it was important to set boundaries and communicate his expectations to ensure that everyone was happy and comfortable. And he knew that a guest is a guest for two days. On the third he is a pest, but that it was up to him to make sure that his guests felt welcomed and appreciated while also respecting his space and his feelings. Sarah had always been a gracious host. She loved to entertain guests, cook for them, and make sure they had everything they needed. So when her friend from college called her up and asked if she could stay with her for a few days while she was in town, Sarah eagerly agreed. At first, everything was going well. Sarah's friend seemed grateful for the hospitality and the chance to catch up with her old friend. But as the days went on, Sarah began to feel frustrated with her friend's behavior. Her friend would sleep in late, leaving Sarah to do all the work around the house. She also didn't seem interested in spending time with Sarah or exploring the city, instead preferring to stay inside and watch TV all day. And on top of that, she would invite her own friends over without asking Sarah first, leaving her feeling crowded and overwhelmed. On the third day of her friend's stay, Sarah found herself feeling more and more irritated with her behavior. She tried to be patient and understanding, 
but couldn't help feeling like her friend was taking advantage of her hospitality. Finally, on the fourth day, Sarah decided to talk to her friend about her behavior. She explained that while she loved having her stay with her, she needed her to be more considerate of her living space and her feelings. At first, her friend seemed defensive and hurt, but eventually, she came around and apologized for her behavior. She promised to be more mindful of how she was acting and to make sure that she was being a respectful and grateful guest. For the rest of her stay, Sarah's friend was much more considerate and respectful of her space. They were able to enjoy the rest of their time together, and Sarah was glad that she had set boundaries and spoken up about how she was feeling. In the end, Sarah realized that while she loved having guests over, it was important to set boundaries and communicate her expectations to ensure that everyone was happy and comfortable. And she knew that a guest is a guest for two days. On the third he is a pest, but that it was up to her to make sure that her guests felt welcomed and appreciated while also respecting her space and her feelings. Jack had always been a social butterfly. He loved meeting new people, making friends, and being the life of the party. So when his friend invited him to stay with him in his beach house for the weekend, Jack jumped at the chance. The first two days were a blast. Jack and his friends spent their days lounging on the beach, grilling burgers, and drinking beer. They also met some new people and had a great time hanging out with them. But on the third day, things started to go downhill. Jack's friend had to leave early in the morning for a business meeting, leaving Jack alone at the beach house. Jack didn't mind at first. He thought he could use the alone time to catch up on some reading and take a nap. However, as the day wore on, Jack began to feel bored and restless. He had no one to talk to and nothing to do, and he started to feel like he was stuck in a prison. He started pacing around the house, looking for something to occupy his time, but nothing seemed interesting or appealing. As the hours ticked by, Jack's frustration turned into anger. He started feeling resentful towards his friend for leaving him alone and not making any plans for the day. He began to text him angrily, demanding to know why he had left him alone. His friend tried to explain that he had a business meeting to attend and couldn't spend the day with him, but Jack was too angry to listen. He felt like he had been abandoned and left to fend for himself. Eventually, Jack decided to pack his bags and leave the beach house early. He felt like his friend had been a bad host and hadn't lived up to his expectations. He decided that he would never stay with him again, and that he would tell everyone he knew about his terrible experience. In the end, Jack learned a valuable lesson about expectations and communication. He realized that he had set unrealistic expectations for his friend and had failed to communicate his needs and wants effectively. He also recognized that he had overreacted to the situation, and that his anger and resentment had clouded his judgment. From that day on, Jack made a conscious effort to communicate more effectively and to manage his expectations when staying with friends. He also learned that sometimes it's better to be alone than to be with the wrong company, and that a guest is a guest for two days. On the third he is a pest if he doesn't respect his host and communicate effectively. Sophie had always been a gracious host. She loved inviting people into her home, cooking them delicious meals, and making sure they felt welcome and comfortable. So when her friend Amy asked if she could stay with her for a few days while she looked for a new apartment, Sophie was more than happy to oblige. The first two days went smoothly. Sophie and Amy spent their days exploring the city, shopping, and catching up on old times. They also enjoyed cooking together and watching movies at night. However, on the third day, things started to take a turn for the worse. Sophie noticed that Amy was starting to take advantage of her hospitality. She would leave dirty dishes in the sink, track mud into the house, and stay up late talking on the phone, disturbing Sophie's sleep. Sophie tried to be patient and understanding, but the more she tried to accommodate Amy's needs, the more she felt like she was being taken for granted. She began to feel like Amy was overstaying her welcome, and that she was starting to become a pest. Sophie tried to bring up her concerns with Amy, but she was met with resistance. Amy felt like she had a right to be comfortable in Sophie's home, and that Sophie was overreacting to minor issues. 
As the days went on, Sophie's frustration grew. She started to dread coming home from work, knowing that she would have to deal with Amy's mess and noise. She began to resent Amy for intruding on her space and disrupting her routine. Finally, on the fifth day, Sophie had had enough. She sat down with Amy and explained that she needed to start respecting her home and her boundaries. She told her that while she was happy to host her for a few days, she couldn't continue to allow her to act like a pest. To her surprise, Amy apologized and promised to be more considerate of Sophie's needs. She cleaned up the kitchen, washed the dishes, and even offered to cook dinner that night. Sophie was relieved and grateful for the change in attitude. She realized that sometimes people need a wake-up call to realize they're not behaving properly, and that it's important to communicate your needs and boundaries clearly and respectfully. From that day on, Sophie made sure to set clear boundaries with her guests and to communicate her expectations from the beginning. She also learned that being a good host also means being a good communicator, and that a guest is a guest for two days. On the third he is a pest if he doesn't respect his host's home and boundaries. Ellie had always loved hosting parties, and her house was known for being the go-to spot for weekend gatherings. So when her cousin Jane called and asked if she could bring a few friends over for a weekend, Ellie was more than happy to oblige. The first two days went smoothly. Jane and her friends were respectful of Ellie's home, and they all had a great time hanging out, cooking meals, and playing games. However, on the third day, Ellie started to notice a change in her guests' behavior. They were becoming more rowdy and loud, leaving trash around the house, and inviting people over without asking permission. Ellie tried to be patient and understanding, but she was starting to feel like her guests were overstaying their welcome. She had planned to spend the day catching up on work, but she couldn't concentrate with all the noise and commotion. She decided to have a talk with Jane and her friends. She explained that while she was happy to host them for the weekend, their behavior on the third day was starting to become disruptive and disrespectful. She asked him to tone it down and be more considerate of her home and her neighbors. To her surprise, Jane and her friends were defensive and refused to take responsibility for their actions. They argued that they were just having fun and that Ellie was being uptight. Ellie realized that she had made a mistake in not setting clear boundaries from the beginning. She had assumed that her guests would know how to behave, but she had not communicated her expectations clearly. Feeling frustrated and disrespected, Ellie decided to cut the weekend short and ask her guests to leave. She realized that sometimes being a gracious host means knowing when to say enough is enough. From that day on, Ellie made sure to communicate her expectations clearly with her guests before inviting them over. She also learned that being a good host means setting boundaries and enforcing them when necessary, and that a guest is a guest for two days. On the third, he is a pest if he doesn't respect the host's home and rules. Samantha had always been the life of the party, and she loved nothing more than having guests over at her house. She was known for her warm hospitality and generous nature, and her friends and family loved spending time with her. So when her friend Mark called and asked if he could stay with her for a few days, Samantha didn't hesitate to say yes. Mark had fallen on hard times and needed a place to stay while he got back on his feet. At first, everything was great. Mark was a polite and considerate guest, and he helped out around the house by doing dishes and running errands. Samantha was happy to have him there and enjoyed spending time with him. However, as the days went on, Samantha started to notice a change in Mark's behavior. He became more demanding, asking for things like meals at specific times and expecting Samantha to drop everything to cater to his needs. Samantha tried to be patient, but she was starting to feel overwhelmed by Mark's constant demands. She had her own work and responsibilities to take care of, and she couldn't spend all her time waiting on him hand and foot. One day, Samantha had a work deadline to meet and she asked Mark to give her some space so she could focus. Instead of respecting her wishes, Mark became angry and started yelling at her. He accused her of being a bad host and not doing enough to make him comfortable. Samantha realized that Mark was taking advantage of her hospitality, and she decided that enough was enough. She had been generous and kind, 
but she could not tolerate Mark's disrespectful behavior any longer. She sat down with Mark and had an honest conversation with him. She explained that she was happy to help him out, but she had her own life to live and couldn't cater to his every whim. She asked him to respect her space and her boundaries, and to be more considerate of her needs. To her relief, Mark listened to her and apologized for his behavior. He realized that he had been taking Samantha's kindness for granted, and he promised to be a better guest. From that day on, Samantha and Mark's relationship improved. Mark became more respectful of Samantha's space and boundaries, and Samantha was happy to continue hosting him as long as he respected her home and her needs. Samantha learned that being a good host doesn't mean sacrificing your own needs and boundaries. A guest is a guest for two days. On the third, he is a pest if he doesn't respect the host's home and rules. Setting clear boundaries and enforcing them is essential for a healthy and happy host-guest relationship. Liam was excited to have his friend Tyler stay with him for a few days. Tyler was flying in from out of town for a job interview, and Liam had offered to host him during his stay. Liam had always prided himself on being a good host, and he had gone out of his way to make Tyler feel comfortable. He had cooked him meals, taken him out to see the sights, and even given him his own room to stay in. But as the days went on, Liam began to notice that Tyler was becoming more and more demanding. He would make constant requests for food and drinks, and he would stay up late watching TV and making noise, even though Liam had to get up early for work. One night, Liam had to ask Tyler to keep it down, as he had an early meeting the next day. Tyler became defensive and accused Liam of being a bad host. He said that he had expected more from him, and that Liam was being too uptight. Liam was taken aback by Tyler's behavior, and he began to wonder if he had been too accommodating. He had gone out of his way to make Tyler feel at home, but he felt like Tyler was taking advantage of his kindness. The next day, Liam sat down with Tyler and had an honest conversation with him. He explained that he was happy to host him, but he needed Tyler to be more respectful of his home and his boundaries. He asked Tyler to be mindful of his noise level and to clean up after himself, and to be more considerate of his needs as a host. To his surprise, Tyler listened to him and apologized for his behavior. He realized that he had been taking Liam's hospitality for granted, and he promised to be a better guest. From that day on, Tyler's behavior improved. He was more respectful of Liam's space and boundaries, and he made an effort to help out around the house. Liam was happy to continue hosting him, and he felt like they had a better understanding of each other's needs. Liam learned that being a good host is not about being a doormat. A guest is a guest for two days. On the third, he is a pest if he doesn't respect the host's home and rules. Setting clear boundaries and enforcing them is essential for a healthy and happy host-guest relationship, and Liam realized that he needed to stand up for himself if he wanted to be a good host. Sophie was excited to have her cousin stay with her for the weekend. They hadn't seen each other in a while, and Sophie wanted to make sure that her cousin had a great time. The first day was great. They went out to see some sights and had a nice dinner. But as the weekend went on, Sophie's cousin began to become more and more demanding. She would ask for things without saying please or thank you, and she would make messes without cleaning up after herself. Sophie didn't want to ruin their time together, so she tried to ignore it at first. But by the third day, she was at her wit's end. Her cousin had taken over her living room, leaving her no space to relax, and she had been up late making noise, even though Sophie had to work the next day. Sophie knew that she had to say something, but she didn't want to hurt her cousin's feelings. She sat down with her and explained that she was happy to have her there, but she needed her to be more considerate of her space and her needs. She asked her to be mindful of her noise level and to clean up after herself, and to be more respectful of her as a host. Her cousin was surprised by Sophie's request and became defensive. She said that she thought Sophie was overreacting and that she wasn't being a good host. Sophie was hurt by her cousin's response, but she knew that she had to stand her ground. The next day, Sophie's cousin left early, saying that she had to catch a flight. Sophie was sad that their time together had ended on a sour note, 
but she knew that she had done the right thing by speaking up. In the days that followed, Sophie reflected on the experience. She realized that being a good host doesn't mean that you have to put up with bad behavior. A guest is a guest for two days. On the third, he is a pest if he doesn't respect the host's home and rules. Setting clear boundaries and enforcing them is essential for a healthy and happy host-guest relationship. Sophie's cousin eventually apologized for her behavior, and they were able to mend their relationship. But Sophie knew that in the future, she would be more assertive about her needs as a host. She realized that being a good host doesn't mean sacrificing your own comfort and happiness, and that it's okay to set boundaries and enforce them, even with family. Mark was a successful businessman who often hosted clients from out of town. He took great pride in his hospitality, ensuring that his guests had everything they needed to feel comfortable and welcome. One day, Mark's colleague introduced him to a potenti, our client who needed a place to stay for a few nights while they worked out the details of a new business deal. Mark welcomed him into his home and showed him around, making sure he had everything he needed. At first, everything went smoothly. Mark's guest was polite and respectful, and they had productive meetings during the day. But as the third day approached, Mark began to notice that his guest was taking advantage of his hospitality. He would leave his belongings strewn about the house, make loud phone calls late at night, and help himself to food without asking. Mark started to feel like he was being taken for granted, and he began to regret inviting him to stay. On the third day, Mark's guest announced that he would be extending his stay for another week. Mark was taken aback. He hadn't anticipated that his guest would want to stay longer, and he wasn't sure how to tell him that he wasn't comfortable with it. As the week went on, things only got worse. Mark's guest started to make demands, asking for meals at odd hours and expecting Mark to drop everything to entertain him. He became increasingly difficult to please, and Mark found himself becoming more and more frustrated. Finally, on the tenth day, Mark had had enough. He sat down with his guest and explained that he had been happy to host him for a few days, but that his behavior had become unacceptable. He asked him to leave and find another place to stay. His guest was taken aback and tried to argue with him, but Mark stood firm. He knew that being a good host didn't mean sacrificing his own happiness and well-being. A guest is a guest for two days. On the third, he is a pest if he doesn't respect the host's boundaries and hospitality. Mark's guest left in a huff, but Mark felt relieved. He realized that he had been too accommodating, and that he needed to be more assertive in the future. Hosting guests was an important part of his business, but he knew that he needed to set clear boundaries and enforce them, even if it meant risking a business deal. In the end, Mark learned that being a good host wasn't just about providing a comfortable bed and a warm meal. It was about being respectful of both his guests and himself, and finding a balance between hospitality and self-care. When Hannah inherited her grandmother's cabin in the woods, she was excited to have a quiet retreat to escape to on the weekends. She loved the peace and solitude of the forest and looked forward to spending lazy afternoons reading and hiking in the woods. One day, Hannah's friend asked if she could bring a friend along to the cabin for the weekend. Hannah was hesitant at first, but she didn't want to be rude, so she agreed. The first day went well enough. Hannah's guest, Alice, seemed polite and considerate, and they spent the day hiking and cooking meals together. But as the day went on, Hannah started to notice that Alice was becoming increasingly demanding. She would ask for more food, more blankets, and more attention, as if she was entitled to Hannah's hospitality. On the second day, things only got worse. Alice slept in late and expected Hannah to entertain her, complaining when Hannah wanted to spend time reading by herself. She didn't offer to help with any chores around the cabin and expected Hannah to wait on her hand and foot. By the third day, Hannah was at her wit's end. She couldn't believe how entitled Alice was acting and how little she seemed to appreciate the hospitality that Hannah had offered her. She decided that she needed to have a talk with Alice and set some boundaries. When she confronted Alice, Alice became defensive and accused Hannah of being rude and inhospitable. She said that she was just enjoying her time at the cabin and that Hannah should be grateful for the company. 
Hannah realized that she had made a mistake in inviting Alice to the cabin. She had assumed that Alice would understand the unspoken rules of hospitality, but she had been wrong. She knew that she needed to be more assertive in the future and set clear boundaries with any future guests. In the end, Hannah learned that being a good host wasn't just about providing a comfortable space for her guests. It was about finding a balance between hospitality and self-care, and setting clear boundaries to protect herself and her space. A guest is a guest for two days. On the third, they are a pest if they don't respect the host's boundaries and appreciate the hospitality that they are offered. Jenna was excited to have her childhood friend, Sarah, come stay with her for a few days. It had been years since they had seen each other, and Jenna was looking forward to catching up and showing Sarah around her new city. But as soon as Sarah arrived, Jenna started to regret her decision. Sarah was demanding and critical, complaining about everything from the weather to the food. She expected Jenna to cater to her every whim and didn't seem to appreciate anything that Jenna did for her. On the second day, things only got worse. Sarah slept in late and expected Jenna to wait on her hand and foot. She criticized Jenna's taste in music and didn't want to go to any of the places that Jenna had suggested they visit. By the third day, Jenna was at her breaking point. She felt like she had been nothing but accommodating to Sarah, and Sarah had repaid her with nothing but complaints and demands. She knew that she needed to have a talk with Sarah and set some boundaries. When she confronted Sarah, Sarah became defensive and accused Jenna of being rude and inhospitable. She said that she was just trying to enjoy her time in the city and that Jenna should be grateful for the company. Jenna realized that she had made a mistake in inviting Sarah to stay with her. She had assumed that Sarah would understand the unspoken rules of hospitality, but she had been wrong. She knew that she needed to be more assertive in the future and set clear boundaries with any future guests. In the end, Jenna learned that being a good host wasn't just about providing a comfortable space for her guests. It was about finding a balance between hospitality and self-care, and setting clear boundaries to protect herself and her space. A guest is a guest for two days. On the third, they are a pest if they don't respect the host's boundaries and appreciate the hospitality that they are offered. Lena had always prided herself on being a good host. She loved nothing more than welcoming friends and family into her home and making them feel comfortable. But when her sister-in-law, Emma, came to stay for the weekend, Lena began to regret her hospitality. Emma was a difficult guest from the start. She arrived hours later than expected, without so much as a phone call to let Lena know. When she finally did show up, she complained about the state of Lena's house and insisted on rearranging the furniture to suit her own preferences. Over the course of the weekend, Emma's behavior only got worse. She criticized Lena's cooking and insisted on eating out every night. She monopolized the TV remote and refused to watch anything that Lena wanted to see. And worst of all, she invited a group of her own friends over to Lena's house without asking permission, leaving Lena to scramble to prepare food and drinks for a crowd of strangers. By the time Emma left on the third day, Lena was exhausted and resentful. She couldn't believe that someone could be so ungrateful and disrespectful after being invited into someone else's home. It wasn't until later that Lena realized that she had played a role in the situation as well. She had been so focused on being a good host that she hadn't set any clear boundaries with Emma. She had allowed Emma to steamroll her and had sacrificed her own needs and desires in an effort to please her difficult guest. Lena realized that being a good host didn't mean being a doormat. It meant setting clear expectations and boundaries from the beginning, and communicating those expectations to her guests. A guest is a guest for two days. On the third, they are a pest if they don't respect the host's boundaries and show gratitude for the hospitality that is being offered. From that point on, Lena made a promise to herself to be more assertive with her guests. She would still offer warm hospitality and a comfortable space, but she would also make it clear that her home was her own and that her guests were expected to treat it with respect. Sophie had always loved to travel, and one of her favorite parts of traveling was meeting new people and staying with locals through websites like couchsurfing. 
She prided herself on being a great guest. She was always polite, respectful, and eager to learn about the culture and customs of her hosts. One summer, Sophie planned a trip to Europe and made arrangements to stay with a woman named Maria in a small village in southern Spain. From the moment Sophie arrived, she knew that something was off. Maria seemed distant and cold, and didn't seem interested in showing Sophie around the village or introducing her to her friends. Sophie tried to be friendly and engaging, but Maria rebuffed her efforts at every turn. She was curt and dismissive, and made it clear that she didn't want Sophie to be in her home. On the third day of Sophie's stay, Maria exploded in anger, telling Sophie that she was a terrible guest and that she was unwelcome in her home. Sophie was stunned. She couldn't understand what she had done wrong. She had been polite and respectful, and had even brought Maria a gift from her home country as a thank you for her hospitality. It wasn't until Sophie spoke with another local that she learned the truth. Maria had been going through a difficult time in her personal life, and had reluctantly agreed to host Sophie in an effort to make some extra money. But Sophie's presence had only made things worse for Maria, who resented the intrusion into her personal space and didn't have the emotional energy to play host. Sophie was devastated. She had always prided herself on being a good guest, and she couldn't understand how she had unknowingly caused so much pain and upset for her host. But as she reflected on the situation, she realized that being a good guest meant more than just being polite and respectful. It also meant being sensitive to the needs and desires of your host, and understanding when your presence might not be welcome. From that point on, Sophie made a promise to herself to be more mindful of the emotional needs of her hosts. She would still be polite and respectful, but she would also make an effort to communicate openly and honestly with her hosts, and to understand their needs and desires before assuming that her presence would be welcome. Because at the end of the day, a guest is a guest for two days. On the third, they are a pest if they don't take the time to truly understand and appreciate the hospitality that is being offered. As a young man, Jack had always loved the thrill of adventure. He traveled the world, seeking out new experiences and new cultures, and he always had a knack for finding people who were willing to take him in and show him the ropes. One summer, Jack found himself in the remote Himalayan village of Kargil. He had met a local man named Tenzin who had offered to host him for a few days and show him the sights of the surrounding mountains. At first, Jack was thrilled with his new surroundings. Tenzin was a great host, showing him the best trails to hike and introducing him to the local cuisine. But after a few days, Jack began to get restless. He wanted to explore more of the region, but Tenzin seemed content to stay in the village. On the third day of his stay, Jack couldn't take it anymore. He told Tenzin that he was going to head out and explore on his own, even though Tenzin had warned him of the dangers of hiking alone in the mountains. Jack set out on his own, eager to experience the thrill of adventure. But as he climbed higher and higher, the weather began to turn, and before long he was caught in a blizzard. He tried to make his way back to the village, but he soon became disoriented in the whiteout conditions. As the hours ticked by, Jack began to panic. He was cold, hungry, and alone, and he didn't know how much longer he could survive. But just when he thought all hope was lost, he spotted a faint light in the distance. With renewed hope, Jack stumbled towards Th. E. Light, and soon found himself at the doorstep of a small cabin. The door opened, and a woman named Lakpa welcomed him inside, offering him a warm fire and a hot meal. As Jack recounted his harrowing experience, Lakpa listened with compassion and concern. She offered to let him stay the night, warning him that the weather was only going to get worse. Jack gratefully accepted, and soon found himself wrapped in a blanket and fast asleep. The next morning, Jack awoke to find that the storm had passed. He thanked Lakpa for her hospitality, and set out on his journey back to the village. But as he walked, he realized that he had learned a valuable lesson, that being a good guest meant more than just seeking adventure and thrill. It also meant being respectful of your host's wishes, and understanding that sometimes the greatest adventures can be found in the unexpected kindness of strangers. From that point on, 
Jack made a promise to himself to be a better guest, and to always show gratitude and appreciation for the hospitality of others. He realized that a guest is a guest for two days. On the third, they can either be a burden or a blessing, depending on how they choose to act. And Jack knew that he wanted to be a blessing to those who welcomed him into their homes and their lives. Sophie had always loved to travel, and when she was given the opportunity to spend a semester studying abroad in Paris, she jumped at the chance. She arrived in the City of Lights with wide-eyed wonder, eager to soak up all the culture and cuisine that the city had to offer. Sophie was placed with a host family, a lovely couple named Marie and Pierre who lived in a charming apartment in the heart of the city. From the moment Sophie arrived, Marie and Pierre welcomed her with open arms, showing her around the city and introducing her to their friends. For the first few weeks, Sophie was in heaven. She explored every inch of Paris, from the winding streets of Montmartre to the grand boulevards of the Champs Elysees. She spent her afternoons sipping coffee in sidewalk cafes, and her evenings sampling French wines and cheeses with Marie and Pierre. But as the weeks went on, Sophie began to feel restless. She missed her friends and family back home, and she longed for the familiar comforts of her own bed. She started to feel like she was imposing on Marie and Pierre, and she worried that she was becoming a burden to them. One day, Sophie decided that she had to speak to Marie and Pierre about her concerns. She sat down with them over coffee and explained how she was feeling. She apologized for feeling like a pest, but she told them that she was struggling with homesickness and loneliness. Marie and Pierre listened patiently, and then smiled warmly at Sophie. Mark Kerry, said Marie, you are not a pest to us. You are a guest, and we are honored to have you in our home. And if you are feeling lonely or homesick, we want to help you in any way we can. From that moment on, Marie and Pierre went out of their way to make Sophie feel welcome and loved. They took her on weekend trips to the countryside, cooked her favorite meals, and introduced her to their friends as if she were their own daughter. Sophie realized that being a good guest wasn't just about being polite and respectful, but also about being open and honest about your feelings. She learned that it was okay to ask for help, and that a good host would always do their best to make their guest feel comfortable and at home. When Sophie returned home at the end of her semester, she knew that she had not just gained a new appreciation for French culture, but also a new family in Marie and Pierre. And she realized that being a good guest meant not just showing gratitude, but also being open to the kindness and love that others have to offer. Sarah had always been a social butterfly, and when she was invited to a weekend party at her friend's lake house, she was ecstatic. She packed her bags with swimsuits and sun hats, ready for a weekend of fun and relaxation. When she arrived at the lake house, she was greeted by her friend, Tom, and a group of his friends. They welcomed her warmly and showed her around the house, which was perched on a hill overlooking the lake. The first day of the party was a blast. Sarah spent the day swimming in the lake and lounging in the sun with the other guests. They grilled burgers and hot dogs for dinner and drank beer by the bonfire well into the night. But on the second day, Sarah started to feel out of place. She noticed that the other guests seemed to have inside jokes and stories that she wasn't a part of. They spent most of the day playing card games and watching sports on TV, which weren't really Sarah's interests. Sarah started to feel like she was intruding on the group's dynamic, and that she was more of a pest than a guest. She tried to join in on the card games and conversations, but it always felt forced and awkward. On the third day, Sarah packed up her bags early and left the lake house without saying goodbye. She felt ashamed and embarrassed that she hadn't fit in with the group, and she didn't want to overstay her welcome. It wasn't until a few days later that Tom called her to ask why she had left without saying goodbye. Sarah confessed that she had felt like a pest and didn't want to impose on the group. Tom was surprised and saddened by Sarah's confession. He told her that he and the other guests had enjoyed having her there, and that they had thought she was a fun and interesting person. Tom reminded Sarah that being a good guest wasn't about fitting in perfectly with the group or sharing all the same interests. It was about being yourself and showing respect and gratitude to your host. He told her that if she had stayed, 
they would have found ways to include her and make her feel comfortable. Sarah realized that she had been too hard on herself, and that her own insecurities had led her to believe that she was a pest. She learned that being a good guest wasn't just about being social or entertaining, but also about being kind and gracious to your host and fellow guests. And she knew that the next time she was invited to a party, she would be confident in herself and show the same kindness and respect to her host that she had been shown. John had always been a bit of a wild card and when he showed up unannounced at his friend Mike's house, Mike wasn't quite sure what to do. John had been a good friend for years, but he was known for his unpredictable behavior and tendency to cause chaos wherever he went. Mike welcomed John into his home, but he made it clear that he was only able to host him for two days. John promised to behave himself and be a good guest, and Mike reluctantly agreed to let him stay. The first day went smoothly. John helped out around the house, cooked dinner for Mike and his family, and even played a game of catch with Mike's son. Mike was pleasantly surprised by how well John was behaving, and he started to relax and enjoy having his friend around. But on the second day, things started to take a turn. John slept in late and didn't help with the chores like he had promised. He drank all of Mike's beer and ate all of his snacks without offering to replace them. And worst of all, he started to make inappropriate comments and jokes that made Mike's wife and kids uncomfortable. Mike tried to ignore John's behavior and give him the benefit of the doubt, but by the end of the day, he had had enough. He sat John down and told him that he had overstayed his welcome and that he needed to leave the next morning. John was taken aback by Mike's sudden change in attitude. He apologized profusely and promised to make it up to Mike and his family. But Mike was firm in his decision and he made it clear that John had violated his trust and made him and his family uncomfortable. The next morning, John left Mike's house feeling ashamed and ember. Rast, he realized that he had taken advantage of Mike's hospitality and had let his own selfishness and bad behavior ruin a good friendship. Months went by without any contact between John and Mike. John knew he had messed up, but he didn't know how to make things right. Finally, he mustered up the courage to call Mike and apologize once again. This time, Mike was more forgiving. He told John that he appreciated his apology, but that it would take time to rebuild their friendship. He also reminded John that being a guest meant showing respect and gratitude to your host, and that being a pest was never acceptable. John learned a valuable lesson that day about the importance of being a good guest and a good friend. He knew that it would take time and effort to regain Mike's trust, but he was determined to do whatever it took to make things right. Sophie had always been the life of the party, so when she was invited to stay with her friend Lisa for the weekend, Lisa was excited to catch up and have a good time. But after a few days, Sophie's fun-loving nature had started to wear thin. On the first day, Sophie arrived with bags full of alcohol and snacks, and she immediately started blasting music and inviting people over without asking Lisa first. Lisa didn't want to be rude, so she went along with it, but she was starting to feel overwhelmed. On the second day, Sophie slept in late and didn't offer to help with any of the household chores. She left her dirty dishes in the sink and her clothes all over the floor, and she didn't seem to care that she was making a mess. Lisa was getting frustrated, but she didn't want to ruin the weekend by confronting Sophie. But on the third day, Sophie's behavior reached a breaking point. She invited even more people over to the house, and they started to get rowdy and disrespectful. They broke some of Lisa's belongings and left the house in a complete mess. Lisa was furious, and she told Sophie that she needed to leave immediately. Sophie was taken aback by Lisa's anger. She had thought that they were just having a good time and she didn't realize that she was being such a terrible guest. She apologized profusely and offered to help clean up the mess, but Lisa was done. It took a few days for Lisa to calm down, but when she did, she reached out to Sophie to talk things through. She explained that being a guest meant respecting your host's rules and property, and that Sophie had violated both of those things. She also reminded Sophie that being a good guest meant showing gratitude and appreciation, not just having a good time. Sophie felt ashamed and embarrassed by her behavior.
she realized that she had let her partying and carelessness overshadow her friendship with Lisa, and she was determined to make things right. She offered to pay for the damages and apologized once again for her actions. Over time, Sophie worked to rebuild her friendship with Lisa. She made a conscious effort to be more respectful and responsible, and she showed her gratitude by bringing thoughtful gifts and helping out around the house when she visited. Eventually, Lisa forgave Sophie and they were able to move past the incident, but Sophie never forgot the lesson she learned about being a good guest. Henry was a successful businessman who traveled frequently for work. Whenever he was in town, he would stay with his old friend Jack and his family. Jack was always happy to have Henry stay with him, but after a while, he started to dread his visits. On the first day of Henry's most recent visit, things started out well enough. Jack welcomed him into his home and they caught up over a home-cooked meal. But as the night wore on, Henry started to monopolize the conversation. He talked endlessly about his business ventures and his accomplishments, barely stopping to ask Jack how he was doing. The next day, Henry slept in late and then spent the entire afternoon on his laptop, taking work calls and answering emails. Jack tried to engage him in conversation, but Henry was too distracted to pay attention. That night, Henry invited some colleagues over for drinks without asking Jack first, and they stayed up late into the night making noise. On the third day, things took a turn for the worse. Henry had promised to take Jack's kids to the park, but he changed his mind at the last minute and decided to go to a golf course instead. He didn't offer to take Jack or his family along, and he didn't seem to care that he was breaking his promise. That night, Henry invited even more people over for a party, and they stayed up even later than the night before, leaving a mess behind. By the time Henry left, Jack was exhausted and frustrated. He felt like Henry had treated his home as a hotel, not a place to stay with friends. He also felt like Henry had taken advantage of his generosity without showing any appreciation. After Henry left, Jack decided to confront him about his behavior. He told Henry that he needed to respect his home and his family, and that he couldn't just do whatever he wanted without considering their feelings. Henry was defensive at first, but he eventually realized that he had been inconsiderate and selfish. He apologized to Jack and promised to make things right. He offered to pay for any damages and to take Jack and his family out for a nice dinner as a way of saying thank you. He also made a conscious effort to be more thoughtful and considerate when he visited in the future. Over time, Henry and Jack were able to rebuild their friendship. Henry learned the hard way that being a guest means more than just enjoying someone else's hospitality, it also means showing respect, gratitude, and consideration. Sophie had always been close with her cousin, Emily. They grew up together, spending summers at the beach and celebrating holidays with their extended family. So when Emily called to ask if she could stay with Sophie for a few days, Sophie didn't hesitate to say yes. The first day of Emily's visit went smoothly. They spent the day catching up over coffee and went out to a nice dinner that night. But on the second day, things started to go wrong. Emily slept in late and then spent the entire day lounging around the house, watching TV and scrolling through her phone. Sophie tried to engage her in conversation, but Emily seemed disinterested and distracted. She barely looked up from her phone, and when she did, she would give short, dismissive answers. As the day wore on, Sophie started to feel resentful. She had taken time off work to spend with Emily, and she felt like Emily wasn't appreciating her hospitality. That night, Sophie invited some friends over for a small get-together, but Emily didn't seem interested in joining them. Instead, she stayed in her room and went to bed early. On the third day, Sophie woke up to find Emily gone. There was a note on the kitchen table that read, Thanks for letting me stay. I had a great time. Sophie felt hurt and confused. She had expected Emily to stay for at least one more day, and she didn't understand why Emily had left without saying goodbye. Over the next few days, Sophie tried to call and text Emily, but she didn't get a response. Finally, she called Emily's mom, who too. LD heard that Emily had been going through a tough time and had been struggling with depression. 
She had wanted to visit Sophie to get away from her problems for a few days, but she hadn't been in the right headspace to socialize or engage with others. Sophie felt guilty for not realizing that Emily was going through a difficult time. She also felt grateful that Emily had trusted her enough to stay with her during this time. She realized that being a good host means more than just providing a comfortable bed and a warm meal. It also means being understanding, patient, and supportive. Sophie reached out to Emily and apologized for any misunderstanding. She told her that she was there for her, no matter what. Over time, Emily started to open up to Sophie about her struggles, and Sophie was able to offer her the support and encouragement she needed. They grew even closer as a result, and Sophie learned an important lesson about being a good host. Sometimes, the best thing you can do is just be there for someone, no matter what they're going through. Jenny had always loved hosting parties. She loved planning out the decorations, the menu, and the guest list, and she loved the feeling of bringing people together and creating a fun, lively atmosphere. But one party she hosted would test her hosting skills like never before. It was a big birthday bash for her husband, who was turning 50. They had invited all of their closest friends and family members, and Jenny had spent weeks preparing for the event. She had rented out a beautiful venue, hired a caterer, and even arranged for a live band to play. The party started off well enough. The guests arrived, and everyone seemed to be having a good time. But as the night went on, things started to go wrong. One guest had a little too much to drink and started getting loud and obnoxious. Another guest got into an argument with someone else over politics, and things started to get heated. Jenny tried to defuse the situation, but it seemed like everything she did only made things worse. She asked the drunk guest to leave, which only made him angry. She tried to change the subject with the arguing guests, but they just kept getting more and more upset. As the night wore on, Jenny started to feel more and more stressed out. She had never had a party go so wrong before, and she didn't know what to do. But then she had an idea, she would use the power of music to bring everyone together. She asked the band to start playing some classic rock songs that everyone knew and loved. And slowly but surely, people started to let loose and dance. The drunk guest stumbled onto the dance floor and started grooving to the music, and the arguing guests started to laugh and joke around. Jenny breathed a sigh of relief. It wasn't the perfect party she had envisioned, but it had turned into something even better, a night of fun, laughter, and connection. She realized that being a good host means being adaptable and resourceful, and using whatever tools you have at your disposal to create a memorable experience for your guests. The party ended up going late into the night, and everyone left with smiles on their faces. Jenny was exhausted, but she felt a sense of pride and accomplishment. She had faced a challenging situation and come out on top, using her hosting skills to turn a potential disaster into a night to remember. Sophie was thrilled when her childhood friend, Emily, called to say she was in town and would love to catch up. Emily was passing through on business and had a few days to spare, so Sophie eagerly invited her to stay with her for a few nights. The first night was wonderful. They stayed up late, chatting and reminiscing about old times. Emily was interested in everything Sophie had been up to since they last saw each other, and Sophie was happy to share all the details. The next day, they went out for lunch and did some shopping, and the day passed in a happy blur. But on the third day, things started to change. Emily seemed less interested in Sophie's stories and more focused on her own life. She talked about her job, her romantic prospects, and her travels, and didn't seem to notice when Sophie tried to steer the conversation back to their shared memories. Sophie tried not to let it bother her, but as the day wore on, Emily's behavior became more and more grating. She left dirty dishes in the sink, took over the bathroom for hours at a time, and seemed to expect Sophie to cater to her every whim. By the end of the day, Sophie was feeling exhausted and frustrated. That night, as she lay in bed, she realized that the saying was true, a guest is a guest for two days, on the third he is a pest. She had always enjoyed Emily's company, but now that she was staying with her for an extended period, 
her flaws and quirks were starting to grate on Sophie's nerves. The next morning, Sophie woke up early and went for a walk. She needed to clear her head and figure out how to handle the situation. As she walked, she realized that she didn't want to ruin her friendship with Emily, but she also didn't want to spend another day feeling irritated and frustrated. When she got back to the house, she sat down with Emily and had an honest conversation with her. She told her how much she had enjoyed spending time with her, but also mentioned that she was feeling a bit overwhelmed by the extended stay. Emily was surprised and a bit hurt, but she also appreciated Sophie's honesty. They talked things out and came up with a compromise, Emily would stay for one more night, and they would spend the day doing something that Sophie wanted to do. They went hiking in the nearby woods, and as they walked and talked, Sophie realized that she was happy to have Emily back in her life, but also happy that she would soon be leaving. When Emily left the next day, Sophie felt a sense of relief. She had enjoyed their time together, but she was also glad to have her space back. She learned that being a good host doesn't mean putting up with everything, but rather being honest about your needs and boundaries while still being kind and respectful to your guests.